Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. In today's video, I want to discuss the real issues that you should be paying attention to behind the infant formula shortage. So the supply chain disruptions notwithstanding, there are many things that we need to pay attention to right now that are contributing to the situation and really that are good teaching points and learning points for us. The first thing, there is a historical precedent that whenever infant formula supply is at a critical level, that that is like a canary in the coal mine event to everything subsequent that there are major supply line issues coming. Now, what the official narrative is, is that the shortage is being driven basically by a prolonged shutdown from Abbott, uh, which is a major manufacturer, obviously, of infant formula. But this is a, a harbinger that there are major issues in the supply chain as a whole that are that are being manifested early on in a critical supply, which is infant formula. Now, something that I actually want to point out here is that there are a lot more options than what the mainstream media is telling people. And there's a lot more powerful choices that women have and families have to feed their children. The first thing, if a woman has stopped lactating, she stopped producing milk, she can restart lactation. There are many, many ways to do this. One of the best community resources to reach out to is a lactation consultant, and particularly lactation consultants who have a background in a midwifery model of care. Um, it really depends. Not all lactation consultants are created equal, but a lactation consultant is a woman who has been specifically trained to assist women in troubleshooting breastfeeding issues and increasing supply, um, helping with latch issues. There's a lot that can be done. Midwives usually have a significant amount of training in lactation um, consultant work, but the lactation consultant in particular is someone who specializes in this. So if you are potentially on the cusp of like maybe I should transition to formula, maybe not, this would be a really, really good time for you to, to if you were looking at, at having issues or you're having issues breastfeeding or having issues with supply, finding a lactation consultant in your area and reaching out to them, that's going to be a, a very, very valuable community resource for you. Another thing also that I think it, it bears saying is that because we have over-sexualized women to the point now where boobs are only there for the pleasure of men and they don't have functional use in nature that God gave, because we have over-sexualized the breast, we are paying for it with, with issues associated with decreased rates of lactation, particularly in, or selective lactation, I should say, most women are going to lactate when they have babies, but actually choosing to breastfeed is a different story. And in a lot of poor communities and communities that are disproportionately affected by rather lowbrow social media, breastfeeding is not considered the sexy thing to do, even though obviously children need to be breastfed, but because it's like, I don't want my boobs to fall, I don't want them to look a certain way, then you know there's, there's going to be ripple effects and impacts from them. I almost made a pun there. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave that one alone. But um, you know, as someone who has a background, obviously in mother baby care, um, as a labor and delivery nurse, I worked several years for this and I worked hand in hand with women who had challenges breastfeeding for various different reasons from various different socioeconomic positions. And I worked with lactation consultants and midwives. I'm very passionate about this and encouraging women to own that their bodies are fearfully and wonderfully made and that God created breasts for obvious reasons, um, not just for, to have fun with, but also to feed children. And so to resurrect that and to embrace that, I think is very important for us as a culture. But seeing these two things at once, the supply line issue and the effect of the hypersexualization of women and the hypersexualization of the breast, like two and two, this is partially a moralistic issue and partially a supply line issue. But the thing is, like, if you have a choice, right? If you have a choice and you have the opportunity, we should always be choosing from a preparedness standpoint to give ourselves more options and more powerful options in our circumstances. And breastfeeding enables that. So I wanna actually give you a couple of tips here without sermonizing too much. If you're looking at trying to get your supply up, red raspberry leaf is a phenomenal herbal adjunct because it's a superfood. Red raspberry leaf will help increase milk supply. There's also fenugreek, which helps as well. Um, there, there are various, various different herbal supportive choices that you can implement into your regime to help increase milk supply. And again, reaching out to local lactation consultants is a very valuable, very valuable thing. There's another good book called The Ultimate Breastfeeding Handbook, and I'll put a link in the description box below to that. Really, really solid resource. But we should be asking ourselves a few questions here from, from a supply issue. First off, why is it? Why is it 
that we have transitioned over the past 120 something years? Why is it that we have transitioned into telling women that their bodies are by default inferior to something that's made in a factory? Um, there has been a lot of predatory advertising by, by companies who manufacture formulas to lower income groups. And that is beyond dispute. I've seen this not only in the United States, but I saw this extensively in the Caribbean and Southeast Asia. Um, it's so far in Southeast Asia, I won't name the company, obviously, that, that I uh, witnessed this with. But in, when I was in Southeast Asia, I remember seeing, as I was driving in a rural part of that area, this, it was a, it was a billboard. And it had this toddler in like a presidential outfit suit up at a podium. And all the other children were looking at him adoringly. And then on the podium, it had the name of this infant formula. So if you are in a developing country or you're a person who doesn't necessarily have access to the best information and you are wanting to do best for your children, if you are actively being told that your traditional ways are inferior to the way of science, better living through science, then if you see advertisements like this and you don't have a firm rooting in your own innate wisdom, A, as a woman, B, as a participant in a traditional culture, and C, like knowing that breastfeeding is obviously and like overwhelmingly superior, if you don't know these things, then you're going to believe that. And so we have to ask ourselves, like, what happened here? What happened in this? We have actively trained people in the current state of affairs to believe that they are helpless victims in a circumstance unless they have the ability you know, to, let me rephrase this a different way. We've, we have trained people to believe that they are inherently inferior to the science <laughs> and that their bodies are inherently not as good and not as glitzy and not as powerful and not as strong and not as apt to surmount the challenges of the world as something that a bunch of people can make in a laboratory. Does this sound familiar to the past two years? Whenever there's profit to be made, there's helplessness to be doled out. The only way that these large groups of people who stand to benefit enormously financially, the only way that they're able to get this across is to teach people victimhood status and helplessness and to actively teach them that their natural instincts and their God-given body responses are inferior. The only way that they make massive amounts of money is to get people to believe this nonsense. And so part of the way that we combat this is A, to have confidence, I submit to you in the Lord God Almighty, He created us fearfully and wonderfully. And so, as part of that, He created our bodies, He created our immune systems, He created women with breasts and mammary glands, and He created us with the ability to produce not just incredible milk, but He gave us the ability to produce antibodies specifically tailored to our babies. That's miraculous and wonderful. In times like this, when we're facing shortages and seeing shortages of people being faced with agonizing decisions and being put in positions that are not ideal rather than to to blame and that's not where i'm going with this to tell like women oh like you should have done this but that ain't what i'm about looking forward to the future though if you are in a position where you're going to be expecting soon or you are in a position of advocacy where you are a healthcare provider you're a nurse or someone who is involved in the care, the support, or the encouragement of a woman who is pregnant and the family that is gonna be welcoming this child. Supporting breastfeeding is very, very important. And the baby-friendly practices um, should, be, should be looked at and certainly considered. And part of these baby-friendly practices are not routinely separating mom and babe, not washing the infant until breastfeeding has been well-established. Um, there are many things that we can do to support that, but friends, this was bound to happen. I've been talking about this for years. Whenever you have the opportunity to move and select towards self-sufficiency and independence, we look back to the past and see these time-tested traditions and see the wisdom of our Creator and see the wisdom of the world that He has given us innately, the wisdom that He has given us in it. And so I want to encourage you guys. I hope I gave you some good resources there, not only the Ultimate Breastfeeding Handbook, but also Red Raspberry Leaf as a support to help for lactation and also fenugreek. There are mother's milk teas that are part of this as well. There are lots and lots of different things um, that can support a woman's lactation and a woman's ability to, to create milk herbally. 
because herbs are superfood and a woman's milk supply directly correlates to the type and quality of food that she's eating. So definitely consider that. Reach out to your lactation consultants, your local lactation consultants, particularly those who are based in a midwifery model of care who are going to be supportive of you in this. Um, frustrating times and I know a lot of people are being hurt and a lot of people are making hard choices but I know I know that it's the Lord who hears the cries of the infant <laughs> he hears that he hears the cries of mom and babe and he is not deaf to the cries of those who are suffering and so I want to encourage you guys um, stay strong and for those of us who are not directly affected by this we can learn lessons from this and plan appropriately and make good decisions for the future I hope the video blessed you all. I hope it was helpful for you. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Maris. You can also stay with me and support me on Patreon, subscribe star, cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I got links below. We actually talk about exactly this in my classes in Medical Prep 101 and 201. In the last day, we talk about birth, women's health, and also the support of mom and babe, and talking about things like supporting lactation, what to do, for instance, in the first few days after of, of life with a baby, and how do you know if they're getting enough food? How do you know if things are going well? We talk about this in class, so let me encourage you. If you haven't considered trading with me, please consider doing that, and check the schedule out at the website, thepatriotnurse.com. Also, you can train with me online in a shorter format. It's four hours, it's $129, and I got a link down below to that. Guys, prioritize your skills as well as your supplies. May the Lord bless you and keep you all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.